Hey there everybody, so today we're going to be talking about something that plagues a lot of new designers and that is not having sufficient references and photos to use in their designs. Now a lot of times new designers will go to copyright free sources or the internet, but a lot of times you run into copyright issues or you're using stuff that everybody else uses because it's a free copyright free thing. And so this is to kind of help you get started with your own photo cache that you can pull from and you can always add more to it. So we're going to be starting though with a photo folder cache of 44 photos. Now I know that number may have just made your heart skip a beat, but we're going to be talking about how to make that as seamless as possible. Right here on the side, you should see the list of prompts coming up. We're going to be talking about how to do this as simply as possible. So if you want to follow along, you can. Otherwise, what you want to do is you want to start with your photo prompts. Grab your camera, grab your iPhone, grab your iPad, whatever you're doing to take pictures, grab them and start taking these photos. And then I'm going to show you how to create your very own photo cache. First thing that you want to do is for the settings of the camera. Now I have a saying, flash is trash, and this is a hill I choose to die fighting on. Flash is actual garbage. And so if you use the built-in flash and it pops up, I would just delete that photo. I don't want to see it. Just get rid of it. Unless it's supposed to look like some punk rocky, like middle of the night, I'm running around situation. There's no reason to use a flash. It doesn't look nice. It just makes everything look blown out and ugly. Don't use a built-in flash. It's unprofessional and disgusting. You should learn to use the light available to you. So the first thing you want to do is for most of these pictures, get your tuchus outside. Go on an adventure. The other thing, if you are allergic to the outdoors, then take things from natural light. And in fact, most of your prompts, as you can see, are outdoors or using natural light because those photos are better. So how to set your camera so you get the best photos is, and this is a common mistake, go to your camera wheel and set it to no flash. This little white dash here, this is your setting. Some people mistakenly do this as their setting. It's not. This is how you set it. And the no flash is looks like a square with a line through it with a little lightning bolt. You want to have no flash as your setting and that way it's on full automatic and the flash won't pop up. That way you're just you're not thinking so much about all the other settings that go with the camera. You're just thinking about composition and the content of the photo. Remember, this isn't necessarily a photography project. This is a design element project. You're going to be taking these photos and editing them and the more they're kind of the same, the better. And so no flash um, no uh, internal flashing and just all automatic settings just to make these simple for everyone, especially since you are going to be taking a lot of photos. So let's get started into the prompts. First of all, what you want to do is get a picture of the sky with no ground in it. Now for this picture, I would go out and this is the one photo that I want you to do a little bit more time with. And so take a picture right away of whatever your sky looks like and try your best to get as little tree or building it as, as, as possible. Definitely no ground. So take a picture going like straight up into the sky. Now the reason why I want you to take a little bit more time on this one is because the sky looks different depending on what time of day. So if you get a cloudy day, you might have to wait for the clouds to pass. If you get a really sunny day, you might have really awesome clouds in the evening. You might have really great colors. So just keep a phone or a camera. You can take these pictures on your phone as well. Remember, these are design elements. And so take pictures on whatever you have of the prettiest skies you have. Now, if you already have pictures of sky, I will actually accept really cool cloud pictures because you want to make sure that you have the best things possible. If you were in Hawaii and you had the most beautiful sunset on the planet, why not use that in your design elements? But having it put into this photo cache will then have your ideas organized. So that is the first one and the one that should take you the longest. Um, the next one is leaves close up. Now I want to talk really close, really quick about leaves. Right now, currently, where we are at, I am at right now, we have got fall. And so um, the leaves are changing and they're beautiful. And so take this opportunity to get really close to them. You want to like be this far away. If this is your camera, you want this far away for close up. Get as close to those leaves as possible without having it get blurry. This is one thing you want to watch out. You never want blurry design elements. You want them to be crispy clear. And so make sure that you can get as close to them as possible without them getting blurry. The next thing that you want to do is take pictures of that leaf, take a leaf off of it and take different pictures of it in different situations, like with the light peering through it, maybe in a shadow, maybe with other leaves around it. See how you can do it. You have to take 
four of these. And so make sure that you are taking them in different situations. Don't just take the same leaf once, find different ways of using those leaves. The other one is leaves from far away. So just focus on the whole tree. Maybe find the prettiest tree in your block. There's a tree down my street that is split down the middle, half green, half bright red. Take a picture of one of those. Find yourself an adventure. Go on a walk with these just on your phone and just take these pictures. It should take probably only one walk to get everything done. So we're gonna go outside. Flowers out right now, so go find yourself some fa fall flowers. Look at how you can get a bunch of different varieties of bees and then the sunlight will look really pretty and also getting pictures of trees from far away. So there's the leaves far away look, but then also you could get leaves close up. Don't just get one picture of leaves, get multiple picture of leaves. Also, if you want to, sometimes it's better if leaves have a little bit of rain on them. Texture, you don't want anything in the texture. So right here, this is a split texture. I don't want this. This would be fine. This is blacktop texture. This would be fine. This is grass texture. This would be fine because this is cement. Not fine because there's something else in it. You want blank, uninterrupted texture. So that would be four photos right there. Now I want to talk about the stuff that is a little bit more wishy-washy, like things that you love and things that you hate. So things that you love, think about like a pet or a stuffed animal. What do you love or what makes you happy? For instance, like I know my dog makes me happy, but sometimes I also, she makes me mad. So she might be something I love instead of something that makes me happy all the time. But something that makes me happy would definitely be my bed. I love to sleep. So maybe taking a picture of my bed, but that could also be super awkward. So maybe instead of that, I could take pictures of something outside because being outside always makes me happy. So think about what you can take different pictures of that will work best. Look at how cute she is. Some of these things that you're going to be taking pictures of are super obvious, like taking pictures of food. You can use whatever you want to take pictures of food, but remember, do you want to do art with it? So whatever you think about, like how do you want to design with it? Just put them all in. You can always switch them out later. All I want are the 44 photos that you have and try and stick as closely as possible to the list. Now the prompt list is more like a guideline. You can add to it, you can take away from it, you can do, let's say you really don't have any pretty windows, then maybe take more of pictures of color. By the way, color can be up to you. You can do anything as long as when you look at it, you think color. That could be your color picture. So think outside the box. Remember, these are supposed to be applicable to design. So how could you use these in the future? And if you don't know, then just take a picture and maybe you'll find a purpose for it later. Or even better, if you work in a group or if you find a bunch of other people who are willing to share their pictures, maybe they can find purposes for the stuff that you didn't even think of in before. So that is how you can kind of start your own photo cache. The next thing you want to do is find a singular place for it. So I would label a folder on your computer or wherever it is called photo cache or fun photo folder or fun photo folder file if you wanted to get really interested in the Fs. And then you're just going to pile all those photos in there and then you're going to put it into some place where you can access it from anywhere. So you can access your Google Drive from most places. So maybe make sure that you put it somewhere on your Google Drive or maybe put it somewhere where in your Google Photos, somewhere where you can access it and get it from wherever so that if the moment arises, you can then pull from that photo folder. So that is how you kind of start your own photo folder cache. And I hope that you have fun taking a bunch of random pictures. And so uh, good luck. And maybe I'll be able to you know, I've ended this video like nine times and I can't figure out a way to say goodbye. Uh, I hope you have fun. Have fun. Be good. Eat your veggies. And this was an awkward way of ending the video.